Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a product review video and it's over these heads. These are the GM Performance Parts Big Block Chevy Aluminum Heads. Now they've been, someone has done a little bit of work. Really, it looks like they just pretty much tried gasket matching and that's it. I'll show you the whole head anyway so you can kind of see what's been done. But uh, I've obviously, they're on the flow bench, so they're going to get to see the flow numbers and we'll get to talk about them. These heads came on the 572 big block Chevy crate engines that GM had. So they had the ZZ 572. They had two versions, a pump gas one, they made like six something, like I think 620. And then they had the race one that made like 720. They had a higher compression and a bigger cam. So that's what these came on. So the, they can make power. Of course, that engine was pretty big too, but I think you can be pretty unimpressed with the flow numbers when I share them with you. But let's first look at the head and then we'll go through the rest. Since it's in this position, I'll go ahead and show you this part though. Oh, back up just a little bit. There's a little Chevy bow type emblem here. Do not confuse these heads with the earlier aluminum big block GM heads. So, and how can you tell? So this is an easy one for you. Um, these ones, they're just Elderbrock Performer RPM castings. So I'll go ahead and tell you that, it's what they are. The Elderbrock Performer RPM castings. I've never been a fan before. Um, and this isn't making me a fan now, but how do you tell the old ones? Well, the old ones back here on this rail here, this is where the exhaust ports are. I know my guy valve things covered up. You'll see like a little on one of them. Usually it's on the end one, which is kind of covered up or on that end. What you'll see is it looks like a snowflake and that's from the foundry winter's foundry, hence the snowflake winter. And that's where they were cast. Those are old ones. Those is not this, that, that is not this at all. It was a completely different head. Matter of fact, to be quite honest with you, I think they actually outflow this one. So but anyway, here's the exhaust port view. And these exhaust ports look like they're raised up a little bit more than stock. Are they as high as some of the more racer pieces like from AFR? I don't think so. Um, for sure, not on that deal. AFR is a little bit taller, Brodix are a little bit taller, but I don't think that these are in the exhaust in the stock height. Otherwise, it'd be much lower because if you had a set of race rights here, I don't have any stock heads here. I'd show you the difference in height. But if you had a set of exhaust, um, race right exhaust ones, you see that port down here. So they're just, eh, if they're close to stock, but I don't think they're stock. I'm 90% certain. But anyway, let me flip it around and show you the chamber stuff so you can see that and get a better view. Here's our chamber view of this. And this is where I'm going to say it's different from stock and someone is modified besides just a little port match. You could tell here on the spark plug boss area of here itself, usually this is kind of sloped in here and it kind of tapers off. Someone has removed some of this material and the chances of the reason for it is if you own a big block Chevy, you'll know you pretty much have to have a dome to have any type of compression. Because if you did a flat top piston, um, that's how some of the earlier 454s were, you had like eight and a half to one compression ratio, super low. So to get any compression, most of them have a dome. So this one's obviously been clearanced and that, that that might affect flow numbers, but I'll go ahead and warn you, probably not, because the valve really doesn't have a whole lot of interaction with this point in the chamber until you get to about this point. And that point, you're like almost 800 to 900 lift. So maybe that area might actually have probably gained flow getting that out of the way, but it is different. So what you have here is chambers. Now they've been blasted just to get some of the carbon off, but my blasting cabinet doesn't make them look like that um, shiny gray that others do, like this stuff. Mine just pretty much takes off the carbon. And the reason why is because if you get a new set of heads, you know, they got a duller, they got a different aluminum look than something like this. And I just, I don't think people want to see that. It looks like a Discovery built or something, factory. But anyway, sidebar. Um, these have a smaller valve size than normal. These are a 219 intake valve and a 188 exhaust valve. So that intake valve is much smaller than usual. It's actually got a, I mean, you can kind of see the rust because it's been blasted, but... You can see the valve job there. It's got a basic 45, but this is something I do want to point out, the hurt flow. That's the top cut right here. Let me pull them. Beep. There's my top cut. This is the actual seat. So it goes top cut flat. That's a bad, bad design. What you really want to have happen is, that being the seat, this top cut really should come straight out. So pretty much from here, coming straight this way, this all this gap in here should be filled in. So it should not be like dug out like this, what it's done. And chances are they just put in an oversized seat, which is what they all, I mean, not, not like they had to, but they just put in a bigger seat because they, in case this same head might be used for something bigger or some 
person like me wants to cut to a bigger valve job, they don't have to replace seats. But point is, since it comes off in that 90, like it does right here, you, it really does not do good things for flow and especially for power. So like I said, if you could just get a little material here, you'd be fine. It'd help you out quite a bit, but they just didn't. Um, as you could tell, there's also the ridge on the exhaust around this. You could see it here. So that's probably not helping either. But anyway, that's this view. The intake ports you've kind of already seen. They're just rectangular ports. It's pretty basic. But you're not watching this for that. Oh, one more thing before I forget. The intake valve actually has a back cut. You can see it on here. So that actually is helping low lift flow. You need to know this. So it wasn't like I floated it with some crappy valve. This is the valves it came with. And it has a back cut, which is a good thing. But this is the exhaust valve, which I did a video on this before. See all that pitting? I told you about the guy going too far up in the, uh, to the sorry, the valve going to that undercut going too far into the guy. That's a previous video. That pitting is not, this is the reason why we're changing valves anyway, but that's bad. Anyway, you're not here for that. You're here for the flow number. So let me show you and then prepare to be disappointed. Here you go. So here they are, but might as well show you. This is the long runner because if you, just to recap, if you're a big block Chevy guy, you have a long runner and you have a short runner that are different. If you look at the long runner, it's aiming towards the center of the cylinder, while the short runner aims towards the wall. So typically the one that everybody advertises is the long runner because it flows more. I flow both. This thing sucks. I'm just gonna tell you, it sucks. You have 251 at 400 lift, a small block Chevy, um, an AFR 220 does that, you know? That sucks. Um, at 600 lift, you have 300 CFM. Decent flowing small block Chevys go 322. Hell, the LS3 head, that thing's going 324. Well, not really. It's going about 310 right there. So that's already better. And it's not near as big as this thing. And that's not, look at the short runner. You think that's, remember, that's the one they advertise. Look at the short runner. 236 at four. That's a bad small block Chevy 400 number. And then you have 282 at six. Not good at all. Like, at all. Uh, the Project X uh, as cast heads for a small block Chevy outflow that. It sucks. Peak flow is 313. That's from the long runner and 302 on the short runner. Yeah, it's bad. It's just bad. Exhaust. You could, this is what I mean. It's not raised up as much as others. Or otherwise, I think if you had the exhaust raised up more, these low lift numbers, especially at 400, would come up. But this peak isn't so bad. That's not horrible. That's why I could tell it's raised up some. If you raised it up more, this would probably come up. But it's still, that's okay. That's livable. These suck. I'm like, well, no, 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 no. This thing makes 700 horsepower on them 572s. It's because they're 572s. If you'd put this thing on and say a 496, you'd be just barely able to crack, you know, 600. I just, I'm not a fan of these heads. So, not the, and I, I never always has their own opinion and thinks I'm bashing them when I do this. I'm just telling you the facts. I do this for a living. I port heads for a living. I sell heads for a living. Um, I'm just not impressed with the head. So not to say it didn't make power on the 572. It does, but man, this is just not that great. There are so much better things that are out there for sure. But if you get on Facebook marketplace and maybe you find a set and you're like, I've got a 454 and I want to put them on. They'll work better than a peanut port head. So there's that. I don't think, I'll be honest with you, I mean, they still outflow um, some of the stock rectangular port heads. Like, so if you had a set of 990s, these actually outflow it. The 990s only flow like 290. But again, they're not aftermarket heads. They were developed years ago, like years, like the 60s, you know what I mean? And these were more modern than that. And they do flow more, but they're not, they're not winning anything. But if you find them in Marketplace, they're not a bad deal if you're trying to replace a factory head. So there's that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out to a 225 intake valve so I can get more of my angles in there. Then I'll reflow and kind of show it. I'm not really doing any port work to it. This is one of those cases where people will ask me, do you think it's worth it for me to port these heads? Because for what I would charge to port these heads, I'd say no. Because even if I port them, it's only going to match what a, a decent factory head uh, not from GM, but a def decent aftermarket head would flow from the factory stock. So putting money into these to be ported, 
probably isn't so much worth it unless you got these for dirt cheap. And maybe you did. So as far as the casting, you know, like I said, these in Elderbrock perform RPM casting. The casting itself is fine. That's one thing about those winter ones I didn't mention. Every single one of the GM that are winters, their porosity is bad. They're just, they are, they're just not great castings. Now, that could be because they're so much older than all the rest, but that's one thing that scares you. They're, they might flow better, but they are rough. I almost feel like you're going to have another failure. These, on the other hand, I'm fairly confident you'll be fine as far as the quality of that. So, anyway, hope you got something out of this video. It's not a bad head. It just, there's definitely better stuff out there. You guys remember, um, take care. I don't pork cast iron, and I'm no Superman.